Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Hello Day with Down to Earth Astronomy. There's been a lot of stuff going on in Elite this week, so we have a lot of topics to talk about, so let's dive right into the first topic. And that is the fact that Elite is now, well it's now, not now, but is going to be free on the Epic Game Store from the 19th to the 26th of this month. You can pick up a copy of Elite for free. If you already play Elite, you might think, why is that interesting? Well, I have three accounts. Um, <laughs> And it's nice for me to have multiple accounts. I know a lot of people like to have multiple accounts. If you want to, let's say, go out and do have an exploration character. That was the first character I, uh, first alt account I created was an exploration character. They go out, they can go out there, explore. It doesn't matter if I'm 20, 30, 40,000 light years away. If I don't feel like exploring that day, log into my main account, which is in the bubble. And similarly, I also have an account that I try to... Um, that I reset from time to time and when I go back and try some of the early game stuff or especially for videos it can be nice to have that from time to time worst case you claim an account and you never play it and it hasn't cost you anything other than well creating a an account on the Epic Game Store if you don't, didn't have that already of course it's going to be interesting to see what kind of effect this is going to have on Elite at least in, like in the short term I don't think like long term a lot is going to happen but Short term wise, we might see a lot of new players um, trying to get into Elite when they get it for free. And I will also expect a lot of those players is going to lose interest in the game relatively quickly. To be honest with you, Elite is a... It's not everybody's cup of tea, I think is the best way to put it. It requires some dedication. It's a game that doesn't hold your hand and it's it's it can be difficult to get started with. I assume most of you guys will know. But hopefully, it's going to mean that also well, there will most likely be someone who's going to stick around and is going to stick with the game. And that is, of course, always very, very welcome. We also have two new community goals currently running in Elite. Now, when I say currently running, it's the time of this recording. Because uh, right now, one of them is at 99% completed and the other one is like 86%. So it's very likely that by the time this video goes live, um, at the very least, one, maybe two of them, both of them are going to be completed. However, they are quite interesting. What's going on law-wise is that the Alliance are going to try to install a number of stations in the Colsac Nebula. Of course, with the whole Adamaster event, barnacle sites were discovered in Colsac, and that, of course, means now humans are beginning to move in through the, uh, into the area, and the Alliance is now trying to claim that area to get access to those um, barnacle sites. And of course, and as always, when we try to claim barnacle sites, the Thargoid shows up in force. So there are two things going on right now. There's a trade community goal where you can trade a number of, um, of materials to a mega ship in the Colsec Nebula. This community goal, of course, heavily favors people with fleet carriers because it's like 300 light years outside the bubble. It's quite a bit of a travel. So having to travel back and forth the bubble and out there just to get the materials, is going to be a very slow process. However, if you could just load all the stuff onto a fleet carrier and then jump it out there in one uh, big jump and then offload it once you're out there, it's going to be a lot faster. So this specific community goal is definitely heavily favoring people who own fleet carriers. The other community goal is a combat community goal. It's, it's very similar to some of the ones we've seen in the past where we have to go and we have to hunt Thargoids, hand in Thargoid combat bonds. Now, the reward this time around, I think, is very interesting. In order to get the reward, you need to be in the top 25 in either of the two community goals. And the way I understand it is, if you, if you hit top 25 in both of them, you will get two of these modules. And the modules that you get is a class 5A frame shift drive engineered with increased range and fast boot. A lot of people call it fast charge, and that is very misleading. It is called fast boot for a reason, because... It is the, the, what the engineering modification does is it increases or the decreases the time it takes the module to reboot when you have it offline. So if you put the module offline and you want to start it up again, that is the reboot sequence. And it is that time that is reduced. It's not the time it takes the frameshift drive to charge up from when you hit jump till when the countdown begins. That time is unaffected. Now, that doesn't mean the module is completely useless. Now, you see the um, the increased uh, or fast boot uh, modification gives a bonus to the optimal mass uh, on the frameshift drive. And better optimal mass means better jump range. 
So overall, I think uh, if my math is correct, we can expect to see a about 9.3% increase in jump range. And of course, it being grade five means it will fit very well on a variety of very popular ships, including the Python, Crate, Phantom, and Mark IIs. So this is a good chance to uh, to get some so a little bit extra range. I'm definitely going for one myself. I think the trade community goal, which is now at 99%, I think I'm certain to get it from that one. I think I'm, I'm almost 100% I'm going to finish in the top 25%. If I want a second copy of it, I need to do a little bit more dark road hunting for the other community goal, if we can get two copies. I'm just assuming that. And it will fit very nicely on my bubble bus that I used to fly around, which is built on a Crate Phantom. So again, we've seen this before. We saw it with missile launches uh, last time, not the most used module, but frame shift drives, this is, I think it's a pretty big deal seeing these. Again, it's not game breaking. This is not. It's going to give you a bit extra jump range, which is which is nice, but it's not like a golden gun or something like that. And I would definitely love to see Frontier continue to do these uh, like double engineered modules, as long as they keep them balanced, like not making them overpowered. At least making sure that one that the extra modification you get is not something that is commonly used. Maybe not something that necessarily gives you a, a combat advantage. Then I think uh, then I think we're good. Also last week, a news article in the PC Gamer magazine was released with some new and exclusive information on Elite Dangerous Odyssey. The article focused around the first person combat side of it. And I did a dedicated video on it on Wednesday, when uh, right after the uh, information was released. And while there was a lot of information there we already knew and some of it we kind of assumed, um, there was a little bit extra additional information about how the soups are going to work and some of the mechanics around weapons. But what I want to talk about here today is, is the whole concept of exclusive first articles, like information being released through exclusive articles rather than through quote unquote official channels. Um, I've been thinking a lot about it and I can definitely see if some people is not a big fan of it. However, for me, it's not really a big deal. I mean, from my point of view as a... Um, as a member of the Elite Dangerous community and as a player in Elite Dangerous, I don't really care if the information is released um, on an official Frontier channel or if Frontier releases it in collaboration with some um, it, with some game magazine or whatever. And, and to be honest, it's a like triple win for Elite and Frontier to do it through these magazines when you think about it. First of all, I would assume that when they do these exclusive deals that Frontier is getting, like the, the game magazine is paying something to Frontier to get that exclusive um, first on some of the information regarding Odyssey. Then of course, it's a lot less right, effort for Frontier to do a third party thing compared to, a, uh, uh, to like doing a full dev diary themselves. And the third point is that when they do these uh, exclusive articles with these big game magazines, it helps to draw a lot of attention towards Elite. If they just released it on their own channel, it would make a big splash in the community amongst existing players. But if they want to draw in new players, they need to begin to get some exciting articles out, some exciting information out outside the little Elite Dangerous bubble uh, of people who are already very much invested in the game. But Personally, I see it as a win for Elite, and I like that. And then I have some uh, some quick short format news here for you. There is a, a new tool out um, that's called ED Taup, Taup I. I think it's called ED Taup I. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. It is from Galactic 911, which is a tool that is built on top of the Toby Eye Tracker, and it is designed to get disabled people a chance to play Elite. Uh, essentially what it does is it overlays controls on your screen, and just by looking at them, I'm not sure if you blink or what you do, but you can look at the different commands on your screen and activate them, I think by blinking, 
and then you can control your ship uh, in that way. So if you don't have the ability to play with a, uh, with a keyboard or mouse or HOTUS or controller because of some disabilities, then there is now a software solution that can allow you to control everything in the game pretty much just by looking at it and blinking. So I think that is wonderful. Um, getting uh, the opportunities for more people to uh, to play and especially people who might not be able to play because of some um, disability, I think that is wonderful. I'm going to be posting a, a link for it in, uh, in the description if you are interested in checking it out yourself. I also recently released my first cockpit review and you guys really, really seem to like it. I had a lot of fun making it. It was a really funny video and it was really difficult to select which cockpit to include. And I actually had to be really, really strict with myself in editing. I have in cutting that thing down a lot. I think the video was, let me check. Yeah, it was about 16 minutes long. So it's quite a bit longer than my videos usually are. And that was because I think after I was done recording, I think I included seven cockpits in this video. I had, well, about, I think about an hour. And I'm not just talking like an hour clip where I didn't have like, I always have gaps, you know, when you're recording where you like switch between from one to the next or you just oh, have to look something up and you do retakes. No, no, with all that cut out of like quote unquote usable footage was about an hour. <laughs> so I had to be very strict myself, really cut that down to a more acceptable length. Didn't want to post a one hour video since some of it was a little dragged out. So that's why I tried really to, to compress it as much as I could. It made it really difficult to also select which one to include and which one not to include because there's been a lot of good submissions. And I'm keeping the submissions that's already been sent in. And there's still new ones coming in. Um, I got a thing like four or five today alone. And then I'm definitely going to do more of these cockpit reviews videos and then I'm going to select from that list. Um, so again, you can still, of course, send in. And But as you can probably imagine, I did seven in the last one. That was a little bit, I think, too, a little bit along side. I'm probably going to cut it down to six in the next one to allow me as myself a little bit more breathing space. I'll promise you there will be more of those videos and uh, keep the pictures coming so you have a chance to get your cockpit features here on this channel. And as always, I'm going to quickly mention the live stream tomorrow, which is going to be at its usual spot at 8 o'clock. Live stream both here on YouTube as well as on Twitch. Topic for tomorrow will be material collecting. I need some more engineering materials, both for my new anti sino ship, but I'm also running low on some other materials. I've been synthesizing a lot of heat sinks during my uh, my fights with the Thargoids out in the Colsec Nebula. So I need to, uh, to restock on a few materials, and I'll do that tomorrow. And these live streams are usually, I really like these. These are more chilled. It gives me more time to talk to you guys in chat, to reply to questions, reply to uh, to comments and messages that you post in there. When in other live streams, I may not be able to be else uh, engaging with you guys. So I like to do these a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more chilled live streams from time to time, giving me some time to talk to you guys directly. So I hope you'll come by. And as always, as I said, 8 o'clock in-game time on YouTube and on Twitch. Hope I'll see you there. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.